Hi, my name's Russ. I want to talk about the difference between a Chinese style, a passive solar, and a Gothic high tunnel. I'm trying to determine what is the most optimal greenhouse to construct to obtain year-round above freezing conditions in a very cold climate. This is a part of a design process for catchsunlight.com. Determining what greenhouse kit would be optimal to provide to our customers during the summer of 2023. So this AutoCAD window uh, of a few different designs shown, this is the ch standard Chinese style. And the Chinese style allows for about a, a 68 degree from horizontal initial angle followed by about 22 and a half, 23 degrees for the remainder of the roof that's facing south. Now the reason for that design is this 22 and a half or 23 three degree angle can extend considerably up and not impact the overall height too much for this particular greenhouse. So you can have wide Chinese style greenhouses, 40 feet wide for instance, provided that you truss those hoops that have the Chinese style profile. So this is a 38 and a half foot wide high tunnel just to show that you can make them wider than the uh, Gothic style. It's shown during the um, winter e uh, the equinox uh, both in March and September you're going to hit the red zone as well as the yellow zone now for the summer solstice it's exclusively this yellow zone so for the month of you know mid June to mid July you'll have zero light whatsoever hitting the back the back side of this greenhouse is used to grow tomatoes and it receives no direct sunlight between March and September yet produces fruit just fine because of the diffusion of the light through the polycarbonate glazing. You can see where the insulation is placed on this. We bring goats in to eat our greenhouse waste. Unfortunately, they like to eat the greenhouse too. One comment I'd make is when you build a greenhouse, don't use wood. Uh, that wood started to rot after three years. Same principle as for as far as um, light distribution in the winter time applies to the the passive solar style as well. But if you take a combination of the Chinese style and the USA passive solar style, and you create an arc, that arc is a, a little bit higher of a profile than the Chinese style, and light intensity is proportional to the height of a greenhouse. So the real saving so in terms of this quasi-Chinese style is less material on the north-facing side. So instead of having a 19-foot arch, this arch on the south side is 19 foot for this particular example, what you have is 18 feet of exposed linear material on the north face, and that saves you about 6% of, of, um, of, of heat release versus having a symmetrical Gothic style greenhouse. This is shown in Newton's law of cooling. If you think about it, energy losses are represented by the, the, the variable Q. H is your heat transfer coefficient. A is the area that separates a hot area or conditions versus cold conditions. And your Ti minus To is your delta T, your change in temperature between the inside and the outside. And if you think about it, when you're designing a greenhouse, your H value is going to be effectively the same between different designs. If you want to change that, add more insulation. Your delta T is also going to be effectively the same between the inside and the outside of your design. So the one thing you have control over is A or area. So if I can minimize the amount of surface area on the north side of a greenhouse, that's also going to proportionally minimize my heat loss. So by having a Chinese style like this, and in this case, this, this is a slightly higher profile than the typical Chinese style, meaning I will have more energy coming into this in the wintertime as well as the summertime. But the length of this is 21 feet 7 inches, just as an example design this with these particular values. So 21 feet 7 inches. If I use a symmetrical Gothic style greenhouse, so use the basically this hoop here 
is identical to this hoop here. The width of this at the base is 26 and a half feet. Now, the length of the hoop is 19 feet on this one. The length of these members here is 18 feet. So I'm saving 6%. So basically, you know, 1 18th is, you know, around 6% or so. I'm saving 6% of my energy losses by having this kind of design. But take a look at the loss of surface area in the wintertime. This is the winter time sun profile on the winter solstice. So both of these designs, if you set either of these up in the east to west direction, so that this surface here is facing south, each of these has complete saturation with noontime sunlight. This design saves 6% energy. This, this uses up 6% energy, but look what you get out of it. Instead of 21 and a half feet, 21.7 inches here, I get 26.5 here. So I get basically 20% more area by having a symmetrical Gothic style greenhouse running east to west if both north sides are insulated. In addition to the practical benefit, of more area with minimal heat loss. The cost to build a Gothic style greenhouse with this additional 20-25% area is actually the same or less than the Chinese style. You have more unique trussing members. Let's count them up together. You have this member, that's one, two, three, you have two separate diagonal trusses, four, five, and then your hoop here is six. That's six independent members plus the challenge of connecting these or these these non-curved pieces. So a lot more effort goes into building and manufacturing the kit as well as installing it. Whereas a standard Gothic high tunnel has three members. You have a hoop, you have your horizontal truss, and you have a diagonal member, and the diagonal member is the same. So three members versus six members, quicker construction for this kind of a design. You get more area, minimal heat loss. It just makes sense. And as you go up, if you look at, for instance, uh, the March and September lighting profile, what you'll see is complete saturation at the ground point here, but you have a little section here that no longer has any light. This area will not see light again until the next late September, early October. If you take that further for either one of these designs, whether it's the Chinese style or whether it's just a standard Gothic high tunnel placed east to west, in the summertime, you have no sunlight on the north side within the greenhouse. Now, that's not really a problem because you don't need the heat. If you're designing a greenhouse that you want optimal growth in the summer, you wouldn't worry about insulating your north side. The intention for this discussion is, if I had my choice between a Chinese style and a standard Gothic style, both had north sides insulated, what would be the best bang for the buck to maintain above freezing conditions with the, the least cost and the least effort that goes into construction? My, my consideration here, looking at these designs, is that the Gothic high tunnel fits the bill. Furthermore, because this area is not used at all in the summertime, it makes it perfect for um, if you wanted to place water or something like that at these locations. It really doesn't affect the, the production of your, of your greenhouse. Not at all in the summertime. It does certainly in the wintertime but you have more energy coming from that water, the thermal mass that will keep the inside of your Gothic high tunnel warm. Furthermore, the placement on the north side against your insulated wall results in minimal heat losses to the exterior from that water. This is an intermediate bulk container. An intermediate bulk container or IBC holds about 250 gallons. They're about $20 a piece in a typical recycle yard. They're easy to come by. In the Chinese style greenhouse, if you replace water on the north side, you'd be chewing into surface area that could otherwise be used for production. In China, the typical greenhouse in the northern latitude 
we'll actually have about one meter thick of clay on the north side that'll act as a thermal mass instead of using insulation. It, it's a worthwhile idea, but it's expensive because you need the structure to support that one meter thick wall as you dump clay into that void. Furthermore, the insulation of that clay is minimal. You'll have a gradient, a temperature gradient from inside to the outside of your greenhouse. And that temperature gradient could be greatly minimized by insulating the north wall. Well, if you're going to insulate the north wall anyway, just put IBCs in your greenhouse and you could even use that as a water source in the summertime. It's the perfect solution. So Based on your energy losses, like I said, you have about a 6% greater energy loss on a Gothic style profile running east to west than you do on a Chinese style, but you get about 20, 24% more surface area of growth in the wintertime. Your costs are actually less for a Gothic style greenhouse, and the insulation is going to be effectively the same. My recommendation, what I've done, is use polyisocyanurate insulation on my green, or at least one of my greenhouses. You can get that in two, uh, one inch layers, two inch layers, three inch layers, but if you lay it up in one inch layers, if it's unfaced, it bends to the curvature of a Gothic style greenhouse. The reason I say polyisocyanurate is because it has an R7 per inch, R6 thereabouts per inch, so it's very effective in insulating your greenhouse. The, the polystyrene is much less, it's more flexible. Another question I get occasionally is, what do you use for a material on the north side if you're gonna insulate? Well, why bother using glazing? So here's two pictures, the top one being corrugated roofing metal, and the bottom being double layer polycarbonate. The price difference between the two is minimal. Your typical corrugated steel roofing is going to be about $2 a square foot. Whereas a 4 millimeter, 2 layer cheap polycarbonate, uh, the kind that Home uh, Harbor Freight uses, that's on the order of about $1, $30, $40 a square foot. Now for my greenhouses, I'll typically use either 2 or 4 layer 8 millimeter. Most commercial greenhouses will use the 2 layer 8 millimeter for their glazing. But on the north side, you're not worried about insulative values for the glazing. So what I recommend is using polycarbonate glazing, even though it doesn't transmit any light, simply as your exterior finish. The reason for that is it's easy to install. When you're mounting polycarbonate onto an existing Gothic style frame, you can easily see the purlins underneath it. You can e easily match the curvature for your hoops. Whereas steel, it's a little bit more uh, unwilling to bend. You certainly can't apply it to a curved surface, but it's not as easy as polycarbonate. And the other thing is because it's not translucent, sometimes you miss your purlin, creating a, a hole that water can go through. So this is the Gothic style greenhouse discuss the exterior, about $12 a square foot. You should expect 30, 40 years of your polycarbonate. So it really isn't an issue using polycarbonate on um, the north side of your optimally insulated Gothic style greenhouse. So we've run a few iterations, had the chance to build several different greenhouses. This Gothic style profile using purlins is the most optimal for not only construction, but also cost and also usable floor space rather than wasting energy and floor space through some of the more progressive designs, such as the Chinese style or even the USA Passive Solar. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to catchsunlight.com. More than help, happy to uh, address questions that you might have. Thanks.